Do you like pole vaulting? Is the Heavensward trailer just the coolest thing ever? Do you want more spikes on your armor than a Macedonian phalanx? Well then Dragoon might be the job for you. Hello there, my name is Julia, and in this video I'll be covering the abilities, opener, rotation, and utility of the Dragoon job at level 90. A raid party in Final Fantasy consists of 2 tanks, 2 healers, and 4 DPS. Dragoon fills one of the DPS pots in the party. The spear-wielding melee DPS revolves around weaving together two combo chains and frequently diving from heights onto their enemies spear first. The job is unique in the way that it deals with OG CDs, as certain abilities have a longer animation lock than others. It also is a relatively easy to pick up melee DPS, but still has some room for mastery for those that seek it. Your gauge is straightforward. The first element is two arrowheads at the bottom of the simple gauge or wings at the top of the extended gauge. These indicate how many stacks of Dragon's Gauge you have. This can be obtained by using one of your signature abilities, Mirage Dive. Once you hit two stacks, the next gear's Kogel usage consumes both and puts you in Life of the Dragon Trance for 30 seconds. This duration is indicated by the second part of your gauge, the Line Gauge. The last part of the gauge is the two skills at the top right. These indicate your Wormwind Thrust stacks. At two stacks, you can use the Wormwind Thrust ability. In the simple version of the gauge, these are the two top arrowheads. Dragoon has a lot of actions and abilities, so let's go over them. I first want to talk about the core of your rotation, which is your GCD combo chain. Dragoon has two of them, and they both start with True Thrust. The first chain combos into Disembowel, which grants you a buff that increases your damage dealt by 10% for 30 seconds. It then continues into Chaotic Spring. This GCD applies a damage over time onto the target and does increased damage if hit from the target's rear. You continue the combo with Wheeling Thrust, a GCD with another rear positional, and then you gain access to Fang and Claw, a GCD with a flank or side positional. This upgrades your Through Thrust into Raiden Thrust. You can use this and then start your second combo chain. After Raiden Thrust, you combo into Vorpal Thrust and Heaven's Thrust. After Heaven's Thrust, you gain access to Fang and Claw first and Wheeling Thrust second. Remember the positionals on both of them. You then upgrade Through Thrust again into Raiden Thrust and you can start over with the first combo chain. It's worth mentioning that there's never a reason to break the combo and start over. You always finish these 10 GCDs unless the combo drops after 30 seconds of inactivity. For AoE encounters, starting at 3 or more targets, you can use the AoE combo chain instead. This starts with Doom Spike, goes into Sonic Thrust, and ends with Coorphan Torment. Doom Spike gets upgraded into Draconian Fury after the use of Coorphan Torment. These three are all line AoEs in front of your characters whereas most other jobs GCD AoEs are circles around their characters. Keep this in mind and position your character accordingly to hit all enemies. The last GCD you have access to is Piercing Talon. This is your ranged ability. You can use this to maintain uptime if you're forced to disconnect from the boss. It is worth noting that Piercing Talon does not break your combo chain, so it's always worth using if you're disconnected for longer than one GCD. Now let's talk about all the different OGCDs you have access to. Life Search ensures the next GCD you land is a guaranteed critical strike. It also heals you for a portion of the damage dealt. Try to use this exclusively on Heaven's Thrust. This ability gains two charges from level 88 onwards. Try to pull the charge to use in raid buff windows without overcapping a second charge. Next is Lance Charge. This ability increases all of your damage dealt by 10% for the next 20 seconds. Simply use this on cooldown after the opener shown later. Dragon's Sight tethers you to a chosen ally on a 2 minute cooldown, increasing both your and their damage dealt by 10% and 5% respectively for 20 seconds. You can also use this without an ally, which then only increases your damage dealt by 10%. The priority in a vacuum for the ally is Ninja over Samurai over Monk or Reaper, over Dancer over Bard over Black Mage over Dark Knight over Red Mage, over Summoner, over Machinist, over Gunbreaker, over anyone else. Applying this mid-combat can be tricky though, so most Dragoons use a macro to do this instead. You generally have three options for this macro. You have the specific macro, which targets one specific person. 
You can combine this with a setup party list to always have the mentioned number to be the highest on the priority list. I do that by sorting the row list like so. Then there's the mouse over macro, which requires you to hover over the person you wish to tether. This can be either in-game or over the party list. Lastly, there's the mixed macro, which defaults to your specific chosen party member, but does prioritize mouse over if you are hovering over anyone. This macro is great if you are uncertain about your mouse over abilities. Out of these three macros, the flexibility of the mouse over macro is generally considered to be the best. Next is Battle Litany. This is your rape buff on a 2 minute cooldown. It increases everyone's critical strike chance by 10% for 15 seconds. Simply use this on cooldown after the opener. Since Battle Litany and Dragon Side share a cooldown, they should always be paired together. I Jump is an OGCD on a 30 second cooldown. Each usage grants you the ability to use Mirage Dive. Mirage Dive then grants you a stack of Dragon's Gaze. Gears Kogol does a simple line AoE in front of you. If used at two stacks of Dragon's Gaze, it consumes both stacks and grants you the Life of the Dragon window, turning the ability into Nestrond, which has a shorter cooldown and does more damage. It also unlocks Star Diver, a hard-hitting OGCD ability that can be used once per Life of the Dragon window. It additionally cleaves around the target in AoE. Spine Shatter Dive has two charges and functions mainly as an OGCD gap closer. In general, you want to hold both charges for use under your 2 minute rate buff windows. Barring sufficient skill with elusive jump, using Spine Shatter to chase the boss to maintain uptime is always optimal compared to holding it for your buff window. Uptime matters the most. Dragonfire Jump is another hard hitting OGCD similar to Stardiver. It also cleaves around the target in AoE. You naturally want to use this on cooldown in single target encounters. Wormwind Thrust is gained by getting two stacks of First Mind's Focus. A stack can be obtained by using Raiden Thrust or Draconian Fury at the start of a combo chain. This means that after gaining two stacks, you want to use Wormwind Thrust before starting your next combo chain, giving you 5 GCDs to weave it in without overcapping. Lastly, Elusive Jump allows you to perform a backflip, putting distance between yourself and the boss, or if you anger your camera correctly, putting you closer to the boss. This ability is difficult to use, as it functions wildly different from other movement abilities in the game, but can be insanely useful in the right hands. Try to get used to this ability to use it to its fullest extent. The opener is fairly strict, but with some practice you can master it relatively quickly. Start the pull by using sprint about 3 seconds prior to pulling. This can be left out if the physical range in the party uses their movement speed buff. An alternative is using Elusive Jump a second before the pull starts. Only use Sprint or Elusive Jump if you are certain you don't need them within the next 30 seconds. Run towards the boss and start with True Thrust. If using a Tincture on pull, use it here. Continue with Disembowel, Weave in Lance Charge first and Dragon Side second. Take care that if you have Dragon Side macroed, you might need to spam the button. Use Chaotic Spring next and Weave in Battle Litany and Spine Shatter. Continue the combo chain with Wheeling Thrust, weaving in Gears Kogel and Life Search. Use Fang and Claw and weave in High Jump and Mirage Dive. Start your combo chain again with Raiden Thrust, weaving in Dragonfire Dive. Continue with Vorpal Thrust, weaving in Spine Chatter Dive and Life Search. Continue with Heaven's Thrust, Fang and Claw, and finally Wheeling Thrust. Start your combo chain again from the beginning with Raiden Thrust, weaving in Wormwind Thrust as well. If your ping is too high to weave in Battle Litany and Spine Shatter or similar, just delay the two Spine Shatters until after your second Life Search and weave Mirage Dive with Life Search instead. Here's an example of the opener being done.
Like discussed before, after the opener, it is your goal to keep all your abilities on cooldown and prevent them from overcapping. One ability that is frequently drifted is the Gears Kogel at the end of the Life of the Dragon window. This Gears Kogel will be available directly at the end of the window and should be used instantly. Next to this, you want to maintain your combo chain by alternating between the two chains with each usage. Previously, I talked how different OGCDs have different animation locks. This matters for deciding on how to weave. The OGCDs are placed into three groups. Group A has a lock of 0.6 seconds, Group B has a lock of 0.8 seconds, and Group C has a lock of 1.5 seconds. Generally, two abilities of Group A can always be weaved together. If you have a very high ping, then weaving in an OGCD of A and B together might be difficult. If you have moderately high ping, then weaving in together two OGCDs from Group B might be difficult as well. You cannot ever weave in any OGCD with the OGCDs from Group C. If you encounter two targets, then use your Chaotic Spring combo alternating between the two targets with each combo usage. Also, start using your life searches on the fifth hit of your combo, being your Fang and Claw. On three or more targets, use your AoE combo. And use life search on Corfian Torment. Lastly, Dragoons bring some utility to the party. We've already talked about your mobility options with Spine Shatter Dive and Elusive Jump. However, alongside these, Dragoons have access to the melee roll actions. The first being Second Wind, which heals you for a considerable amount of health on usage. Leg Sweep stuns the target, if they are stunnable, which most bosses are not. This ability doesn't see much usage outside of niche content. Next is Bloodbath, which places a buff on you, healing you every time you deal physical damage to the target. Faint lowers the target's physical damage dealt by 10% and magical damage dealt by 5% for 10 seconds. This is great to combo with physical rate whites or hard hitting tank busters. If it goes unused for a while though, do not feel afraid to use it on magical rate whites as well. Keep in mind that most parties run two melee DPS and both have access to Faint. If used at the same time, they will override each other, so spread them out. If you're in a static, then try to coordinate the usage of Faint with your healers, as they generally will know where they need it the most. Arm's length is your knockback immunity. It also doubles up in usage by making anyone that strikes you slowed. This reduces their auto attack speed. Lastly, you have True North, which allows you to ignore all positionals for 10 seconds. Use this if you're ever forced out of your positional spots and have to use your positional GCDs. If you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, then please consider subscribing. And thank you for watching. A special thanks to Stella and Eve for helping me fact check the contents of this guide and providing me with footage of Dragoon.